Yes, yes. Wait, no. Yeah, you're right. right. The circumflex is the little carrot that goes over the other side. Yes, but not as simply as you might think. For example, this would be cosine 2 theta. So it kind of has to do with whether it's an odd or an even number. This would be okay. some variation of 4 theta. An eight petal rose. Speaking of. Spoiler. So which one is the sign of four theta here? Yeah, one. Definitely number five. Now when it's multiple choice, it's not too hard. I mean, there weren't that many options and the others were way off. So when you're trying to graph a curve, especially if it's a curve you're not too familiar with, symmetry can help you. Because if you establish symmetry, you only graph half the curve. The other half just follows. So symmetry is something that certainly exists in rectangular coordinates and exists in polar coordinates. In fact, they're the same symmetries that you're used to from rectangular coordinates, but they do play out a little differently. For example, if you have a graph that is symmetric to the pole, a 
An example of that would be one of the roses or the, uh, the, the lemon skates. So if you have something that looks like this, That's symmetric about the pole, meaning that each position can be reflected across the pole and you end up on the curve again. You can identify symmetry about the pole if you look at an equation and you can swap r with negative r and you get the same equation. That's a curve that's symmetric about the pole. Now, there's another term the book uses called symmetric uh, about the polar axis. The polar axis is a new term you don't really need to know. We're just talking about the x-axis. These can be identified when theta and negative theta are interchangeable. And an example of what that might look like would be, you know, a limousine. If it has a horizontal orientation, where theta and negative theta are interchangeable. one, of course, is going to be symmetric about, can you guess? The y-axis. The y-axis. That's what I've talked about here. So yes, we have that as well. The book calls that symmetric about the line theta equals pi over 2. But of course, the line theta equals pi over 2 is just the y-axis. So an example of that would be, you know, a cardioid that's vertically oriented. And that occurs where you can replace theta with, uh, I think it's pi minus theta. Yeah, pi minus theta. So if theta and pi minus theta are interchangeable, that gives you that symmetry about the y-axis or the line uh, pi over 2, theta equals pi over 2. <coughs> so that's how you can identify the types of symmetry you can use it to help you graph. This is especially useful if you have to be working with a graph that isn't one of the ones we know. Now, 6 minus sine theta, now that I've erased them, what type of graph is that going to be? Cardioid? Not a cardioid. It's close, though. It is a limousine. To be a cardioid, the coefficients have to be the same. So if it meant 6 minus 6 sine theta, that would be a cardioid. But if it's 6 minus 1 sine theta, it's a lima sine. Now it's oriented vertically because of the sine, which means I already know that it's going to be symmetric about the line theta equals pi over 2. Pretty much all of the sine variations are going to be symmetric around the line theta equals pi over 2. But there are a couple of exceptions, in particular things like lemon skates, which are, like I said, a little weird. So if I wanted to test this, since I already have a pretty good guess, I'm going to jump to that one. I'm not going to try any of the others. I'm going to look at this equation, r equals 6 minus sine theta. And say, so, okay, well, what if I plug in pi minus theta? What happens? That gives me 6 minus sine of pi minus theta. Here's where you have to use the identities from the previous chapter. How can I 
simplify the sine of pi minus theta? Sine pi cosine theta minus cosine pi sine theta. You do need to be a little careful with those, of course. And when you're doing your homework, certainly keep the, uh, the reference sheet with all the identities in front of you. So this can be reduced a little further. In particular, we know what the sine of pi is. What's the sine of pi? Zero. What's the cosine of pi? Hmm? Mm, not cosine of pi. Cosine of pi is negative one. So that's going to be six minus negative negative one sine of theta. That's a lot of negatives, so let's be real careful here. But these will cancel each other out, leaving you with 6 minus sine theta. Which is the original equation. So it checks out that this is going to have that vertical symmetry about the line theta equals pi over 2. So. Must be the, I got it right. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, questions about that? Now that it checks out. Yeah. So, the general test for, for symmetry, just to summarize, is you put, it, uh, put it pi minus theta and run it through and see if it gives you the same result. Unlike in rectangular coordinates, you have to test each one using a different approach. There is no general test. That one is if you're expecting symmetry about the line theta equals pi over 2. But the other two are performed very differently. I'll show an example of them so you can see what we're talking about. But, uh, uh, you can you're able to assume if it's if it has symmetry based off of just the like, equation. You don't have to put the points in, right? Like in the situation. Well, I didn't put any points in. Yeah, OK. What I did was use the equation to make a guess about which symmetry it should have. But then I had to confirm. Okay. Are you like able to not confirm the right test? Uh, well, not if you're asked to. But why does sine pi cosine theta cancel out with one? Because the sine of pi is zero. Uh, and then the the row is zero. What are questions about that? So the pole is just where you find the origin? Uh, yes, the pole is the origin. All right, so let's consider number eight here. What shape should number eight have? It also looks like a limousine. It's probably oriented horizontally because of the cosine. So I'm going to try <coughs> the switch theta with negative theta. That one's very straightforward. I hardly need to write it out. If I replace theta with negative theta, what happens? Nothing. Why? Cosine is an even function. Since cosine is an even function, the cosine of theta is the cosine of negative theta. And that's why the cosine ones are almost always uh, symmetric about the polar axis. Because you plug a negative theta to the cosine, it does the exact same thing the theta would do. So that's definitely the symmetric with respect to polar axis. What's next? Why did you choose theta to switch? Not R or anything else? Oh, because I expected it to be symmetric about the polar axis. That's because you knew it was a limousine. Not just that it was a limousine, but because it was a cosine limousine, I was pretty sure it was horizontally oriented. And that would have been a line? If it had been a sine limousine, it would have been a case similar to what we did over there. In that one, you just. Where's the pipe? Well, that's how you test for symmetry around the line pi, like, uh, theta equals pi over 2. You replace theta with pi minus theta. So 
So I replaced theta with my minus theta. And then I reduced it down. Okay. All right. So consider r equals 4 secant theta. multiple terms. It's not a row. It's not one of the shapes I showed you, actually. It's much simpler than that. Is this a circle? It's a line. I looked at an example of this from the homework from the previous section, where we had r equal 3 secant theta. Same idea. RV was root three. I forget exactly, but it, the, the idea is the same. Let me just show you how that plays out again. Oh, wait, no, that it didn't play the same thing. Well, anyway, if R equals four secant theta, if I rewrite this as four over cosine theta. Then I can multiply both sides by cosine of theta, and if r cosine theta is equal to 4. r cosine theta is equal to x by our translation formula. So this is the line x equals 4. What does the line x equals 4 look like exactly? It's a vertical line. It's a vertical line passing through 4, 0. And of course, 4, 1, and 4, 2, and 4, negative 3, and all those. So what type of symmetry is evident here? Polar axis symmetry, or x-axis symmetry, same thing. It's definitely not about the y-axis. It's not about the pole. It's only x-axis symmetry. So I should be able to replace theta with negative theta and get the original curve. So let me just try that. If I take 4 secant of negative theta, then what? Yeah, so secant is even, just like cosine. So it is 4 secant theta. So it is the same, so yes. It's got uh, symmetric with respect to the polar axis. So curves involving secant, that's a good thing to think about first. Just like curves involving cosine are typically polar axis symmetry, curves involving secant are more likely to be polar axis symmetry. Now, this one isn't one that we've seen before, and I wouldn't know off the top of my head what the shape is. So, I gotta see if there's some way for me to figure out if it's symmetric. If I replace r with negative r, is that the same thing? In other words, is 4 cosecant theta, cosecant, 4 cosine theta, cosecant theta the same as negative 4 cosecant theta, cosecant theta? No. 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 So we can rule out pole symmetry. What if I plug in a negative theta in place of theta? Yeah, I mean, the cosine is fine, but the cosecant isn't even, so that's not going to work either. So, if I plug in a negative theta, I'm going to get 4 cosine negative theta cosecant negative theta. But that's going to be negative 4 cosine theta cosecant theta, which is not what we started off with. Cosecant is odd, so I can pull the negative out, but that's not the same as what we started with, so no, that's a no. The other possibility is, well, what if I plug in pi minus theta to replace all the thetas? Let's see if that works. This one's going to be a little awkward.
So cosecant is 1 over sine. This is equivalent to 4 cosine pi minus theta over, four, oh, over sine pi minus theta. So I've got to break both of them down. Cosine of pi minus theta would be cosine pi cosine theta plus sine pi sine theta. In the denominator, the sine of pi minus theta is sine pi cosine theta minus cosine pi sine theta. Now the sine of pi is still zero, that's going to wipe out a couple of terms. The cosine of pi is one, that neatens things up a little bit. I've got four cosine theta over, oh sorry, cosine theta is negative one, what am I saying? So that's negative four cosine theta on the top and positive sine theta on the bottom, which isn't going to cut it. This is the exact opposite of what we started with. Cosine theta, cosine theta. So this, does, this one doesn't have any symmetry. And if it's not a curve you're familiar with, the only way you can rule out all types of symmetry is to try all of them. Since each has a different test, that's a little more work than it is in rectangular coordinates. But it failed all three tests, so no, not symmetric to respect many of these. Now, it might be symmetric somewhere, some kind of way. But we're not going to learn any other type of symmetry, so that was just no. <laughs> 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 so I missed a third one. Yeah. No, I'm pretty sure it's the second one. Is there an alternate way of testing that? Ah, uh, theta plus pi. That's the one. I forgot there's a, a different method to test for uh, symmetry by the pole. It didn't look like it worked replacing r with negative r, but I must have missed something. So I replaced theta with theta plus pi. Let's see what happens there effectively adding half a rotation. If I have r equals 4 cosine theta plus pi, cosecant theta plus pi. Again, I can write that as 4 cosine theta plus pi over sine theta plus pi. And that's going to come out to 4 cosine theta cosine pi minus sine theta sine pi over. Down here I'm going to have cosine theta cosine pi, sorry, cosine theta sine pi. Well, sine theta cosine pi. Not that it really matters. Plus cosine theta sine pi. The sine of pi is still zero, so these terms eliminate. Cosine theta is negative one, but those are going to cancel each other out. Cosine pi right. Leaving me with four cosine theta over sine theta, which is the same as four cosine theta cosecant theta. So yeah, that, that one checks out. It depends what you're testing for. This is the test for symmetry about the line theta equals pi over 2. For symmetry about the pole, you're replaced with theta with theta plus pi. So to get to the test. So there are two ways to test for origin. Either maybe the R, um, you can define the R or the 
Right. If R and negative R are interchangeable, that is pole symmetry. But that one is not always easy to spot. It didn't seem to me that cosine theta, cosecant theta, and negative cosecant, cosine theta, cosecant theta were the same thing. But it seems they are. And I can kind of see why, because cosine is even and cosecant is odd. So pole symmetry is determined. Oh, shit. I've got to take this one off. No, no, I, I just, I, I didn't, I, you can select more than one answer at a time. So uh, I, this one was still selected, but no, pole symmetry is correct. Yeah. Um, I don't understand the first thing you crossed out, the sine theta, sine pi over the cosine theta. Sine, sine of pi is zero. So these, these are just zeros. Uh, okay. So I have cosine theta, cosine pi minus zero sine theta cosine pi plus zero. With them out of the way, I was able to cancel the cosine pi's. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So, other symmetry tests. Without going into it, what type of symmetry would you anticipate here? Uh, polar axis. Polar axis, definitely. Cosine is an even function. If I replace theta with negative theta, I'll get the same thing. So this is definitely going to have symmetry on the polar axis. Now it is, as I mentioned a minute ago, possible to have more than one type of symmetry at the same time. So you may still need to investigate a couple of the others. Uh, when you're doing the homework, you don't really need to do that because I assume you'll have access to a grapher. You can plug into a grapher and see visually whether it has a symmetry or not. You won't be able to do it on the test, but uh, certainly doing the homework, you can save yourself time that way. Now, this one, what do you think? Number 12. Okay. Symmetry about the pole. Is it, I think, I think it's the first two. You mean the polar axis? Yeah, it's not the first two. It's both, yes, correct. Which means you also need to test symmetry around the line theta equals pi over 2 because I suspect it's all three of them. But that's why it's not safe to just go with the first one that occurs to you. So polar axis you can tell because cosine is even. Plug negative theta in, gives you the same thing. About the pole you can tell because r squared is r squared, whether r is negative or positive. So it works for both of them. It's going to be a little weird for it to work for two and not the third one. Usually it works for two of them, the third one is also going to be in there. So just make sure you're testing all of them. Again, looking at the graph will help tremendously. So. Can we make sure that was right? Hmm? Can we click on everything? What? Can we make the budget click if that was right? Okay. So. Consider the equation theta equals negative 3 pi over 2. Now it's degenerate, meaning there's no r. So it doesn't matter what r is. r is 3. At any radius, theta will always equal negative 3 pi over 2. Which of these is that going to look like? Uh, the ordering is not clear, so if you say top left, top right, bottom left, bottom, bottom right. Bottom left, bottom right. Top right. I think it's not bottom right. Bottom right. Bottom right. Theta is equal to negative 3 pi over 2. Meaning we just have an angle. We don't have a distance. The distance doesn't matter. Theta is always 3 pi over 2. So it's always going to be pointing straight up. You can walk forward or backward, meaning you can go up or down, but you're only going to be pacing this line. No matter what R value you, uh, you choose, theta is bound to this line, so that's the only thing you're going to have. Could you explain that a little, a little further? I'm confused on how it, it's a straight line. Well, theta is negative 3 pi over 2. Right. So what's R? doesn't matter. Theta is negative 3 pi over 2. 
This is positive 3 pi over 2. Negative 3 pi over 2 oh, points that I way. See. Okay. So it's this line, except what's r? It doesn't matter. r could be negative, so I'm also going down. I, I wasn't talking that that was 3 pi over 2. Ah! So thank you. Sure thing. For the borrowed part, would it just be um, x equals 0? The equation or thing coordinates would be x equals 0. Theta equals 5 pi over 6. Which one is that? So that's the top left, right? Top left. Top left. Top top right. right. 5 pi over 6. Where is 5 pi over 6? Pointing this way. Oh, this second one. I forgot where it was again. I, I, I need to put this down. Now, what about the equation of rectangular coordinates? That one's less obvious. So let's have a look. Is it minus x over two? That should work. Yeah, basically. So if theta is 5 pi over 6, then the tangent of theta is the tangent of 5 pi over 6. The tangent of 5 pi over 6 is negative. And it is y over x, so it's going to be 1 half over root 3 over 2. But the tangent of theta is also y over x. So this is y over x. I can reduce, cancel out the 2's. I have negative 1 over radical 3 equals y over x. Uh, I don't know how strict website is. I, I don't like seeing radicals in the bottom. If I multiply both sides by x, I find y equals negative 1 over radical 3 x. Now, like I said, I don't like to see radicals in the denominator, so I would prefer <coughs> negative root 3 over 3 x. Web assigned, I suspect, would accept that one, but I would not want to test. Leaving radicals in the denominator is a bad habit. You need to uh, avoid that. What does this look like? 8 sine theta. R equals 8 sine theta. go ahead and do that. If r equals 8 sine theta, how can I transform that into rectangular coordinates? Remember the translations work in terms of things like r squared r cosine theta, r sine theta. If I multiply both sides of the equation by r, I can get there. So I'll have r squared equals 8 r sine theta. That's a trick you want to keep in mind. It'll come up a few times. So r squared is x squared plus y squared. 8 r sine theta is 8 y. R sine theta is y. Oh. All right. So that's in rectangular coordinates. But it's not the form that is going to be easier to read and identify. I'm going to move the 8y over to the other side. This is a circle. 
x squared plus y squared minus 8y is equal to 0. How can I rearrange that into the equation of a circle? This is something that you might not have done for a little while. I need to complete the square. I don't need to do it for x squared because it's just x squared. That's fine. y is a little more complicated. I'm going to need to do x squared plus y squared minus 8y plus something on both sides. The something needs to complete the square. What number do we need to add to complete that square? One half of 8. It's four and this square. So 16. 16 is the number I'm looking for. You're going to need to complete the square a few more times in this class. So come again, we'll look at polar uh, uh, conic sections uh, later. So that's something you might want to review. That does complete this square, meaning that I can write that as x squared plus y minus 4 squared is equal to 16. So, what are the characteristics of that circle? Circle only has two properties, center, radius. What are they? Radius is four, that's it. Where's the center? Four units down. Zero, four. The general form of a circle is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared, where the center is the point h, k. Yes, it is certainly not a coincidence that 4 was half of the 8. How do you know whether it's 4 or negative? Ah, not a great strategy. Well, how would it be negative 4 from that number? Well, if you had a negative uh, in front of the 8, for example. Well, I mean, that's good enough for you to remember, and that's fine. But uh, just looking at the equation, I can tell right away that it was a circle with a radius of 4 centered at either 0, 4, or 0, negative 4. Uh, I was pretty sure it was centered at 0, 4 because this is a positive 8. So I was pretty sure this is correct. But we also wanted the equation of rectangular coordinates, which we wouldn't have had without doing it, all the work. I really need to put it in the rectangular equation. Yes. Okay. So the, the test won't be a multiple choice? No. Oh, believe me, you don't want a multiple choice test from me. If I run a multiple choice test, the choices will be very, very similar. So, just that. All right, let's look at uh, something a little different. Got a cardioid here. Looking at the equation, what are some things you would anticipate about it? Uh, it's going towards the right. That's a more difficult question to answer. Now, you can rule that out fairly easily by picking a point or two. But immediately I can tell that this is going to be oriented horizontally. So unfortunately, these are all oriented horizontally. That doesn't help me. But what will help me is if I plug in a zero for theta and see where that goes. If I plug in a zero for theta, what's the cosine of zero? Cosine of zero is one. Three minus three is zero. Not helpful, it turns out, because that means that I'm at the pole. Well, all of them hit the pole. So let's try pi over four instead and see what that does for us. Actually, working with cosine, uh, pi over 3 might be better. Plug in a pi over 3 and see where that lands us. If 
If I set theta equal to pi over 3, I'm going to have 3 minus 3 cosine pi over 3. What's the cosine of pi over 3? 1 half. One half. So that would be 3 minus 3 times a half. What is that? 3 halves. So in the direction of pi over 3, I should have a radius of 3 halves. Does that look correct? No, it's too big. The radius of 3 halves would take me somewhere around here. see that as being correct though. I mean, you're either one-third of the way through the quadrant or two-thirds of the way through the quadrant. It's really the same no matter what you pick. Yeah. Pi over four might have worked a little better for you. That might be easier to picture because you'd be right in the middle of the quadrant. But uh, either way, this one's too big because pi over three is up this direction and it's, it's going to go out too far. So what would it be easier to top of the way? Yeah, this one's way off because pi over yeah. three should take me to three halves it's all the way out there. So I can rule out those top two. And then based off that, are you able to assume that it's going to the left, not the right? Well, it kind of depends on what you mean by go to the left. Well, okay, I mean, like, it... This it one, if I go up pi over 3... It looks right. It hits at about 3 halves. No, I just haven't it. This one, if I go up pi over 3... That's too far. It goes out too far. So then it goes to the left. So it's definitely the bottom left. And yes, if that's what you mean by going to the left, then yes. Yeah, like it, it grows more towards one side. So, even with multiple choice, you can see when the choices are similar enough, you still have to go through and actually figure it all out. With cardioids, there isn't a nice, neat, oh, this is the radius type of situation going on. I mean, you can say that the furthest edge of the cardioid is exactly twice whatever that number is. And it's got to be the same for both terms, or it wouldn't be a cardioid. It'd be a lemason. Lemasons, of course, are a lot more varied. But, does everybody see how I, let me just write that as a point. In this case, it's positive. So, well, six over two minus three over two. Yeah. It's going to be minus. Three over two point five over two minus three point five over two. Oh yeah. Uh, so I mean. The question of orientation can arise. I know that if I plug in a zero, I was at the pole, and it swept out in this fashion. So it was oriented in a overall counterclockwise fashion. That's a little trickier to say with lemasons, of course, when they flip over themselves. But in this case, you're going to have to pick a point that will clearly distinguish the graphs from each other. That's what you need to choose your angle for. Looking at the graphs, at what angle can I tell clearly where it's supposed to be? Pi over 2 wouldn't have worked, for example, because these two are in the same position at pi over 2. Pi over 4 would have worked probably fine. 0 is useless, because all of them are in the same position at the pole. Where do we get pi over 2? Uh, like I said, you have to choose an angle where you can clearly see which graph is which. In the orientation to the angle pi over 3, they all hit very different points. 
This one at pi over 3 goes out about so far. This one at pi over 3 goes out all the way up there. This one comes in very close, and that was the one that ended up being correct. This one goes up around there. So by plugging in pi over 3, I could see by the result which of those four was the most believable. Does that mean you can also do like pi over 6? Pi over 6 should have worked, yeah. Uh, pi over 4 also probably would work. The reason why I avoided pi over 6 in this case was because I already knew that when I plugged in 0, I was at the pole. If I plug in pi over 6, I would probably be very close to the pole. Pi over 3 was far enough away that I thought I, I was pretty safe. Going in the second quadrant might have been a little easier to distinguish from the pole. The danger of using a bigger angle is it's not always obvious what the period is. And if you choose a big enough angle, you're going to get back to the pole again. So you don't want to go too far. Uh, pi over 4 might have been a safer choice, but really any of those should work just fine as long as you're careful and thorough. Question on. Um, so you, um, you have to basically choose like two points to like, figure out the orientation of where, like, what direction. If you want to know the direction of the flow, yes. Okay, and then that wasn't something we needed here, but, but yes, you would have had to do that. Okay, now why was it something we needed? Because we could just tell one point? Is that why we needed two points? Do what? Did we not need two points because we were able to tell based off of one point? Which oh, no, technically I was using two points because I knew we started at the pole. If we started at the pole and then we ended up here, then the orientation was sweeping out counterclockwise. Okay. So, yeah, we did use two points there that identified the orientation. Thankfully, they don't ask for it, but kind of important, so that happens. Sure All right. Another one, please. Three sine, two theta. Which of these is the graph of three sine of two theta? Bottom right. right. Which one now? Bottom right. Bottom left. Wait. Why? It's not the three that determines how many petals. It's uh, the two. Basically, if you have an even coefficient, you have twice that many petals. If you have an odd coefficient, you have exactly that many petals. I made it easier this way because you know only one of them matched the, the salient characteristics that one ought to do. So the next one, four cosine of three theta, how many petals is that going to have? Three. If it's an odd coefficient, it has a number of petals equal to the coefficient. If it's an even coefficient, it has twice as many. What does the four do in this case? The four expands. So you can see this one goes out to four. Yeah. It's like the radius of the fan. And then normally it would go to like one. Right. Uh, I'm going to be the exact number. Okay. So this one had a coefficient of three. There were three petals. Chris, number. Um, if this question had like two graphs which both had three petals, how would you distinguish? Uh, you can look at the radius. In this case, the radius is four because the outward coefficient is four. So if there were two of them and one of them only went out to three, we know that one of them went out to four was the correct. If they really wanted to be harsh, they could give you one that was just reflected around, and you'd have to actually plug in some numbers to see which direction you were going. Could it have like coefficient of three and have like nine petals? Uh, Does that make sense? Well, they're all on top of each other. That's the thing. If you have an odd coefficient, there are six petals here. It's just that three of them are on top of the other three. Uh, so. Uh, <laughs> right. In other words, this is a period of pi. So it, it goes around. Yes. I mean, they all cycle through the same position infinitely. They never stop. That's why we have to talk about the idea of orientation and flow, because they're just going to go around and around. Right. So the even coefficients have a longer period than that? Since they have more petals? Uh, no, that's not, that's not accurate. It, with the odd coefficient, 
The same amount of angle, the same amount of sweep in an odd coefficient produces half a pedal that produces a full pedal in a uh, even coefficient. So here we go, five theta. Unfortunately, they're all five pedal rows. So, how do you know? Well, let's see what happens if I plug into zero. What's the cosine of zero? One. So if I have zero, theta is zero, r should be negative one. Meaning that pointing straight to the right, I should step backwards one unit. This is the correct orientation. Plug into zero. I plug into zero. Five times zero is zero. The cosine of zero is one, so r will be negative one. So I'd be facing to the right, but I would step backwards and should end up right here. This is the only one of the graphs that has a point at zero, negative one. So it's got to be that. So what's the square root of the right hand side? Oh, that's the, the polar axis. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So of course, this one is a four petal rose. It's one of these. If you want to know which, plug in a zero, see what happens. If you end up on the pole, of course, that's useless. But if I plug in a zero in this case, I'll get an R value of negative five. So it's got to be this one. That would be an optical illusion. <laughs> Oh, we, I mean, if you're comparing graphs to the other graph, yes, that could be a scale issue. Or, you know, scale issue. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what, what type of shape is this one going to have? I mean, they're all Limassons, so that kind of gives away that it's a Limasson. But you know it's a Limasson because it's A minus B sine theta. Now, it's also oriented vertically. We can rule out these top two. These are cosine Limasson. It's not one of those. It's one of these down here. Oh, I'm sorry, you're right, backwards. Yeah, it is one of the top two ones. Cosine is oriented horizontally, sine is vertical. So it's one of these two. To know which one, I could plug in zero, see what happens. But it's not going to help me in this case. Because sine of zero is zero, and zero root three is the same on both curves. That's not helpful. But if I plug in pi over 2, that might actually help. What's the sign of pi over 2? 1. So if I'm facing straight up, I should go a distance of root 3 minus 4. Which one is that? that Which one? Right. one? Root 3 minus 4 is negative. So even though I'm facing straight up, I should be stepping backwards. And that's how I'm going to end it down here. If I plug in a 3 pi over 2 and get a negative 1, I'll have 4 plus root 3. In other words, something up here. But this is incorrect anyway. So, again, you gotta, you got to check one of the points to see. Question, Dylan? So, that... The point that we're talking about, uh, root 3 minus 4, is that point that's sort of below negative 2, right? Yes. It's the inner loop of the lima sign. And so if we were to uh, uh, plug in 3 pi over 2, we would get close to that point that's near negative 6, right? Correct. Okay. So you're going to need to play around with these a little bit, of course. Let's take another 10 minute break and uh, I'll get into section A3. I'll wrap it up tomorrow. Yes, it'll be quite brief though. Do you need lessons in Simon from this chapter? Mm -hmm. How many lessons? Pi minus theta and theta plus five. So, Professor, is it possible if we don't have the supplemental homework related to the other ones we've done? And this is just a new thing this time.